No one who's bad is truly bad, and no one who's good is truly good. You know, Loki's out here spitting all this knowledge and trying to, but it, it still can't quite trust that mother. with Hollywood already did if you haven't already go ahead and like share subscribe to the channel ring that bell below anytime we have something you will be among the first to know and we're here with episode two of Loki called the variant which now after seeing it I can see why Marvel sent all the media folks the first two episodes because it feels like after this episode this show is going to drastically change and these first two episodes sort of act as a entire uh two-hour pilot for whatever the hell Loki is about to do in the future and I'm all for it so this episode begins with Loki having gone through some steps of training at the TVA. He's learned some things, he's, he's read some manuals, he's watched some videos, only the ones that he truly cared about. You know Loki, he's only going to spend time on the stuff that he really has any type of concern with. But the first episode that sort of lays the groundwork for the TVA and how it works, this episode does its best to say what would happen if we threw a wrench in that. What would happen if we... If there were multiple nexuses or what happened if there were a red line and, and sort of say this is what happens when shit goes wrong and we learn that just to sort of know that in the back end shit's gonna go wrong what's funny about this episode is that we sort of get to see loki as a tva member uh, and sort of a, a detective you know how we'll always have those procedurals that'll have someone who is efficient at their job come help the police do their job. So like Castle, he was a writer, a book writer. And he's like, all right, well, you you know how to write murder mysteries. Let's take you as an officer and have you do, help us to decide these detective works. In the same way with like um, Lucifer, who's like, oh, you're from hell. Some of this stuff's weird. Let's see if you can help us figure out cases. That's sort of what we're getting here with Loki just in the Marvel way of doing it. It's sort of a trick on the head where Loki, you happen to be the god of mischief, and we happen to be chasing the Loki, so there's nobody other person to help us out on this than, than you. And so the comedy in this episode sort of ensues in all the ways that people just don't trust Loki, and, and rightfully so. You shouldn't. He's Loki. Um, but he goes out of his ways to, to, to always say that, oh, you can trust me, I'm the one to trust, uh, which, as Mobius points out, if someone keeps saying that you should trust me. Those are typically the people that you shouldn't trust. One of the most important parts of this episode that is um, sort of a throwaway line but ends up being the basis of where, where the series goes is Loki asks, quite frankly, why don't you go back to the top of the Nexus to, to, to fix these things, um, these variants and these issues that, that occur in the timeline, as opposed to going to the thread of it and and where it sort of is happening at present time. And what Mobius lets him know is that if you go to the Nexus at the, t at the crux of where it starts, you destabilize, it, dest it destabilizes the internet itself. And so it is always best to go to the very end of the variant, I mean, the very end of the, uh, the Nexus and the branch to deal with it in the quote unquote present day. But what we learn it's because like that castle stuff where he's like, oh, I'm thinking like two steps ahead, Loki thinking like Loki. He comes up with the entire thing that the person, the Loki that they are chasing is in fact hiding in these, in the moments of time that are already going to have a class cataclysmic uh, event. So rag like Ragnarok or great hurricanes or great things like that. And so he says that the Loki is hiding in those moments. They're like, well, we'll go do his dirt, go, go do their dirt, come back and go back to those moments where you can't see because no, no variant is shown in the moment when a crazy thing is happening because we know no matter what, that time is going to end. So Loki did come in handy and Mobius like, ah, oh, you son of a gun, you're going to put me out of my job. And so team all lands up, suits up, and they head over to, suits up, not entirely though, Loki, Mobius gives Loki his knives for a moment and weird. Quickly said, what? No, hell no. Uh, so it's fun to see the back and forth. There's a lot of comedy beats that happen still in this episode uh, that make it so that, yeah, Mobius believes in Loki, but no one else does. And so we're not just going to put him back at full strength. However, like Loki says, once he gets back to that real world and he's not in the TVA, he gets his magic powers back. 
So some of that, the knives may not be as important to him as he needs. And where we head to is they all suit up and they head to this big, big storm that's happening in 2050. And they go to this, uh, this store, this uh, hardware store? It's Rockstar is the name of it, but I can't quite get a make on exactly what they sell there. But in this, Loki, B-15 wants Loki to come with her. And the rest of the team goes with Mobius. She doesn't want Loki to be with Mobius because she doesn't think that Mobius can handle himself with Loki. She feels like she could, even though she, Loki's already gotten the one up on her with the collar thing, which Mobius points out to her. Um, but as that's going on, we get to see sort of the trap being laid out. Um, the TVA member that was stolen at the very beginning of the episode is, is revealed to be there and losing their mind. You see the all the uh canisters of time repair that are existing around that are looks like there's going to be a, a massive explosion and what we do get we get the reveal of lady loki and even though she doesn't like the term loki doesn't want to be called loki we get to see her but not after her playing some mind tricks only that loki would do where she is uh casting her her thoughts into several folks head one of them being b15 to sort of have a conversation with loki and uh loki they're trying to out Loki each other. <laughs> They're one upping each other, trying to go back and forth. Like, hey, I'm, I'm this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. But are you? Are you really in control? And going back and forth. And so what we get is then Lady Loki in one of the forms of a much larger man just beats the crap out of Loki. Loki has a hard time. There's a little bit of a battle that ensues. But uh, how it ends is that she does set off all the charges. And what you see in the TVA is just bedlam. <laughs> you see that TV monitor that had. One, the standard or the, the traditional timeline. And normally, when they have a variant, it's just one off that goes up. You see that TV screen have, like, infinite branches happening. Nexus after Nexus after Nexus after Nexus. And you can just see the dread and the fear that occurs after everybody. Uh, Ravona, who uh, uh, used to be an infield agent, grabs her stuff and is like, no, I got to get back in the field. You just see random TBA agents heading through door after door after door. And Lady Loki enters the door, and you don't know where she's going. And the final sequence of this episode is you see Loki uh, standing outside the door that Lady Loki just went into before Mobius and the rest of the TVA sort of say, no, no, don't, don't go. And you can see this moment, Tom can play it so well, where he seems conflicted. Where part of him is like, I do have a chance to do something different here, or I do have a chance to do something different chasing her or more importantly which i always think sort of loki has in the back of his mind perseverance if i go through this door i'm not around the tva i can do whatever the heck i want to um but he doesn't quite know what the world is on the other side and neither does the audience so he jumps through that door and the episode ends and you're like what <laughs> but i think that puts into place what this series is going to be it feels like what i I, I sort of thought, I always thought Quantum Leap was a part of it, and that's a part of it with them going from time to time to time, which I think is what the rest of the series is going to be. But it also is a bit of The Fugitive, where you had your lead character who is presumed to do something wrong. In this case, he's presumed to be Loki. He does, he's just not trustworthy. They can't trust him. And most of the TVA outside of Mobius uh, does not believe anything he says. He is going through these timelines in, these, in this world now, um, to find the person that is actually doing wrong and, and, and besmirching the Loki name. And so it's a it's qua it's a cross between the fugitive and the quantum leap sort of merged together. And you know, that is my bag. I am all here for it. This is one of those few times where, based on what we got on this episode, we don't really know where it's going to go in the future. Um it's gonna be a, a cat and mouse game of Lady Loki moving, Loki trying to chase her, and then the team chasing both of them and not knowing when and where, who's doing what and uh, who's who's tricking who. Because a part of the issue in all of this is that the Lokis have similar powers. They go through it and say that all Lokis have basically the same power set in these worlds. And so there's going to be times when they show up where they think it's Loki, but it was actually Lady Loki or even vice versa. So they're not going to really know who who they're chasing because the powers and what's happening and the carnage that's happening is is similar to for both of them and that's that's going to be some fun fun stuff to watch um i love this half comedy half serious but now we've sort of got a procedural i think a lot of that is going to go out of the way and i think we're going to get this just 
almost like sliders. If anybody remembers, I'm just naming off sci-fi shows, but any of those shows where they just go from timeline to timeline to timeline um, and sort of fixing, repairing stuff. And what I love now is with all these nexuses, with all these branches going off, we're basically going to get a what-if live-action version because I think everything is going to be flipped on its head. You're going to have stuff where we've seen stuff where, where Loki is in like a presidential campaign. We've seen him doing some other things in some of the trailers. So I think the world is our, our oyster and we can sort of, we're going to see Tom just having a ball and then Lady Loki giving him the business, <laughs> which I'm, I'm all for. What do you guys think about the variant episode? I think this series has laid the groundwork. I, I don't think he's, I love them because I love this weird sci-fi type of stuff. I don't know if these are the best two, this look, this is right in my bag. I love, I love all of this. I don't know if these are the best two episodes of, of any of the Marvel shows that some people are hyperbole, using hyperbole to, 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 to say, but I do think these are two really well done episodes that act as a launch pad for whatever this series is actually going to be. And I am, I can't wait till next Wednesday, uh, Tuesday for midnight for, for most of us, but next Wednesday when, uh, they drop that next episode because I am I am all in. Anyone who's a sci-fi geek is like candy to a small child. This is this is some good stuff. So, what did you guys think about the latest episode of Loki: The Variant? Leave your comments and thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. Or you can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail .com. We also have a podcast with the same name that's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that plays podcasts. We're there. We're currently doing a run of. Um, Marvel pair-ups with Loki and time-traveling shows and or movies. So you can see that here or anywhere the podcasts are played with our guest host, Jamie Jarek. We also are still doing our traditional podcast of Hollywood Already Did It. And this week we'll be talking about uh, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.